Hello and welcome once again to Coding in My Sleep. As usual, I'm your host, David Perry, and again, you are looking at my screen instead of my face. But don't run, I promise it'll be a lot easier this time. So in the interest of time, I have already installed Electrum on this, my wife's MacBook, and I've already imported the master public key and funded one of the Bitcoin addresses so we don't have to sit around waiting for confirmations. Now, in most ways, this wallet looks like any other Electrum wallet, but with one very important difference. Because it has no private keys, the send button has been replaced with one that says create unsigned transactions. Now when we attempt to send coins, we get this prompt showing us the details of the transaction and asking us to save a file containing those details somewhere. Now this file is going to have to make its way to the netbook, so it's going to have to be something like a flash drive or an SD card, but it's very, very important that the SD card or flash drive that you use is clean. This is one of the few ways that you can accidentally bring a virus or malware of some kind from your online computer to your offline computer, so take great care in this this step. Here I'm using a Mac for the online computer and Linux is running my offline computer, so the likelihood of malware being able to go from one operating system to another is fairly low. Now you may also recall in the last video that I said that there were a couple of other ways that our systems could be compromised and that most of those could be caught with just a little bit of diligence. This is the stage at which you need to start exercising that diligence. What you need to do is you need to look at the details of this transaction. Do the addresses in this transaction match what you're expecting? Do the coins you're sending go to the address you sent them to? Do the remainder of the coins come back to one of your change addresses? This is all very important information that you need to verify, and you're going to have to verify it three different times. The reason you're going to have to verify it three times is that there is a very specialized variety of malware out there that looks in memory for Bitcoin transactions and just replaces the destination address with an address of the attacker's choosing. Now this sounds really scary, and it is entirely possible that either of our systems could be infected with this stuff. Remember, our offline system was indirectly sort of connected to the internet once. So there may be this malware sitting on it that can change the destination address. The good news is that as long as both systems are not infected, you will see a change in these transaction details as you move from the infected system to the uninfected system and back again. As long as nothing in these transaction details change, you're almost certainly okay to go ahead with the transaction. So everything here looks fine. We're going to go ahead and save this transaction to our handy little flash drive, and I'm going to go boot up the cold storage system. Just like in our last video, we're going to go through all of our multiple layers of password and start up Electrum. And now we're going to load our transaction from file using the tools menu and select the appropriate file from our flash drive. We are given another opportunity to look over the details of the transaction, and they look like they match what I created on the online system, so we're all right to click sign. And you might recall that in addition to our hard disk and home folder being encrypted, the wallet file itself is also encrypted, so we'll need to enter the third password in order to sign the transaction. As a matter of fact, if you're going to make multiple transactions, you're going to need to enter the password every single time. Now that we've entered the password and our transaction has been signed, we will be prompted to save the file, which we will once again put on our handy little flash drive, and let's return to the online system. Now we once again load our transaction, this time the signed copy, through that same load menu. And once again it's going to give us this prompt where we have one last chance to look at the details of our transaction. Everything looks copacetic, so I'm going to go ahead and click broadcast. Our transaction now appears as pending in Electrum, and if we go over here to blockchain.info, we can see that it has indeed hit the public network and should eventually get confirmed. We can also see that Electrum has helpfully generated and used a change address to help preserve our security and privacy. If for some reason you'd like to not use change addresses, that is an option. It's over here in the settings panel, and it can simplify your transactions a little bit, but be aware that reuse of addresses does compromise your privacy somewhat. See, that one wasn't quite so painful. 
I have, however, run out of time for the day, so thank you everyone for watching, and I hope you are looking forward to watching my next video as much as I am looking forward to making it. As usual, I have to remind everyone that this is a completely donation-supported project, and if you have gotten anything out of this video, it would be greatly appreciated if you could send whatever tip or donation you feel is appropriate to the QR code on the screen. The QR code on the screen is unique to this video, so by sending in money, you're not only helping to fund my continued projects, but you're also telling me exactly what it is that you liked. Thanks everyone, and vote with your wallet.